over four billion years in the making. An island adrift in southern seas. It's Australia. The giant down under. A young nation with all the gifts of the modern age that move beyond the cities and an ancient land awaits. One nearly as old as the earth itself. Australia is a puzzle put together in prehistoric times. And the clues that unlock the mystery can be found scattered across Australia's sunburnt face. I'm Richard Smith, and this is an amazing country. I'll show you that every rock has a history. Every creature, a tale of survival against the odds. Join me on an epic journey across a mighty continent and far back in time. Of all continents on Earth, none preserved the great saga of our planet and the evolution of life quite like this one. Nowhere else can you so simply jump in a car and travel back to the dawn of time. In this episode, with dinosaurs dead and gone, Australia sets sail for the modern world. Isolated and alone, life leaps into some unusual territory. We're uncovering lost worlds and subterranean death traps. Blimey, I mean, this is tight. An exotic band of castaways ruled this faraway land until we turned up. From Australia's ancient stones comes the story of our world. Australia's first four billion years. Strange creatures. Right now, on Nova. So far, our travels down Australia's road of time have taken us from the very formation of the Earth, through the forging of the continent, to the origin of life and the conquest of the land. Your destination is the present day. But it's only now, as we race towards our modern world, that the familiar face of Australia is finally revealed. This is the story of how an island continent became isolated from the rest of the world. And how the life aboard this wandering ark adapted to a changing landscape. But it's a rocky road we travel. When the age of the dinosaurs came to a dead stop 65 million years ago, a great darkness settled over the planet, and the whole course of evolution shifted. When the skies began to clear in the first grim days of the Paleogene, most of the great Cretaceous forests were gone. But life on Earth is tenacious. Ferns were quick to take advantage of the new world, colonizing what was left of the damaged forests of Australia, Antarctica and New Zealand. And following closely behind the ferns, a remarkable Australian tree made a dramatic comeback in the post-apocalyptic world.
This is its microscopic seed, found fossilized amongst the fern spores just above the level of the asteroid debris that marks the last days of the dinosaurs. Like a B-grade monster, this is a tree that is hard to kill. It's the Huon pine. Every branch that falls can re-sprout from the ground. This entire tangled glade is a clone from a single original ancient tree. Now the Huon pine is more than just one of Australia's great Gondwana survivors. This particular tree is thought to be Australia's oldest living organism. It's been growing on this same spot, the cold, wet, windy slopes of Mount Reed in Tasmania, for over 10,000 years. But while life was on the rebound, the supercontinent Gondwana was in its death throes. And the consequences for Australia would be dramatic. India and New Zealand had already slipped away. Now Antarctica and Australia were being torn apart. First, a great rift valley opened up and widened. Then Australia and Antarctica started to unzip from the west. A trickle became a flood as a new southern ocean surged into the gap between the separating lands. Only Tasmania stood firm, holding the two continents together. Today, Tasmania wears its war wounds with pride. For over a hundred million years, intruding molten rock had been forcing its way upwards, looking for a weak spot. This is the volcanic dolerite rock that now dominates Tasmania. There's more of this rock here than anywhere else on Earth. Towering dolerite sea cliffs guard the coast. Dolerite punches through the highlands, and the rock glowers over the capital of Hobart itself. All indelible evidence of the dying days of Gondwana. This was a torrid time across the planet. Although much of the Australian landmass still lay within the Antarctic Circle, the climate was warm rather than polar, thanks to a sudden surge of greenhouse gases that peaked around 55 million years ago. In this steamy world, 